Pastor William Alexander Lawson, as you know, started this church in 1962 in his living room. And when he did that, from the time he started the church, it was a tumultuous time in Houston and in the nation. Pastor Lawson started the congregation, and at the same time, he was an active civil rights advocate. Uh, he was asked by Dr. King to leave this church in the early 60s and to come to be the director of the Southern Christian Leadership Conference. And aren't we grateful that he denied that invitation so that he could continue to do the work of ministry here. And throughout the years of our church's life, we have sought to be those who advocate for the least of our brothers and sisters. And we're grateful that there's some persons who do that, not simply through the church, but likewise in the halls of Congress. And two of those congresspersons are here today. Our congresswoman is a fighter for real. Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee. She's a fighter for real. A fighter for real. And she is here. And I'm going to ask her because this is such a critical time in our nation's history and in the life of this city and state. I'm going to ask her to come and share a word with us and then introduce to us a fighter for real uh, who is with us today. And uh, he's going to share it. Now, those of you who do not know, I was, I was a student. I graduated from Fisk University in Nashville, Tennessee. There's some Fiskites in the room. You can tell at least two of us. Amen. Uh, but there's another Fiskite in the room. And Congresswoman is going to introduce you to the man we had to learn about when we got on Fisk campus. And uh, he's a freedom fighter for real. Congresswoman, will you come and share with us for a few moments? And then she's going to present to us a few people who have come with her. Uh, we are excited about Brother Beto O'Rourke. God bless you, baby. Well, there are several individuals who are with us, and the Congresswoman is going to introduce them all to us at this time. Thank you, Pastor. Wheel Avenue. Oh, I knew I was going to do that to you. What a glorious sight. What a beautiful God-raising, God-praising, celebrating, wonderful ministry, and, of course, serving the people. Give yourselves a hand. I am honored to be able to represent you in the United States Congress. Honored. Thank you to our past emeritus, Reverend Dr. William A. Lawson. You should have heard him at the NAACP 100 years. He's not 100 years, but he gave us a powerful message, and he said we've got to do our jobs. Thank you to Reverend William A. Lawson. <laughs> Delighted that he is with Howard Jefferson, national board member, NAACP. Glad to see him. And he is also joined by Lena Hidalgo, county judge. Let you see her. She was here earlier today. Edna Hughes is here, Sandra Peake, Jermaine Turner, Angela Graves Harrington, Michelle Moore, and LaShawn Williams. Y'all have seen them. I thank you so very much. Let me just say this uh, brief word, and Pastor, we are... Uh, realizing, one, this is your anniversary, Pastor Cosby, to the First Lady and family. Haven't they been part of us? Aren't they, part, aren't they our family? Aren't they our family? And lo and behold, he knew he shouldn't have done this. He brought the Alpha Street Baptist Church past, and I got to go. Please pray for me. Please pray for me. <laughs> he prayed us into celebration at the Congressional Black Caucus Foundation and uh, I'm going to have to tap Pastor Cosby. But let me just say that uh, we mourn those who lost their lives yesterday. And we mourn my brothers and sisters, or at least uh, pay sympathy to those who experienced the threat of life of bombs that came this week. And so I thought I would be different because I have the iconic man of peace with us, with Lizzie and, and Beto O'Rourke, and just say to you that we need more than ever a change uh, we have to, if the good people don't do anything, what do you think is going to happen? And so I came to a place of the good people. I hope that you know my works. And so this is not 
vote for me. I hope you'll be out there voting straight Democratic, to be honest with you. But this, this is for us to take our country. And so to a place I like to say forward because others say back. I want to say take our forward and let our truth be what the world is watching. Uh, and so this election is about our truth. And these people here are good people, the people I've introduced, and they want your truth to be our truth because it's not I that is up here, it is we. So it is my privilege uh, just for a moment, and I will come back, and Pastor has allowed me a moment. I hope I stayed under 60 seconds, I hope. Um, I hope, uh, because I want to have as the closing both uh, John, and he will come with Lizzie, but I do want, just for a moment, uh, the next senator from the state of Texas to the United States Senate, Beto O'Rourke. Pastor, Pastor Lawson, Pastor Cosby, Congresswoman Jackson Lee, and, and I have been in Congress for six years, so I have some basis in saying this. There is no harder working member of Congress than Sheila Jackson Lee. I can vouch for it in Washington, D.C., on the floor of the House. I can vouch for it in every single part of Harris County and Southeast Texas that I have been to. No one works harder. No one's up more hours. No one's calling me in El Paso, Texas, when one of her constituents from Harris County is in my community and needs some help more than Sheila Jackson Lee is. So it is an honor to be here with her. It is an honor to be here with John Lewis, my all-time hero in life, the absolute example that we need at this moment. This very divided, very polarized country, defined right now in the national conversation by so much smallness and meanness and pettiness. To that, we must bring our courage, our confidence, our strength, this big, bold, beautiful heart, which will distinguish the people of Texas, not just in this election on the 6th of November, but every single day thereafter, as we bring this country together to make sure that we meet every single challenge that faces us. I know that we are up to this moment. I know that we are up to the challenge. And it is the honor of my lifetime to run to represent you in the Senate. Thank you for allowing me to be here today. Very grateful, Pastor Cosby. Thank you. You see why we have been given just a moment by this distinguished pastor on his anniversary. Uh, it is now my privilege, and he seeks no privilege because his humility uh, is uh, mountainous, but he guides the members of the United States Congress, both House and Senate, uh, where there is a moment of reconciliation and peace, where there is a challenge to be better than ourselves, and where there is a man who walked the walk and fell in battle for our rights. Ladies and gentlemen, the distinguished congressperson from Atlanta, Georgia, my friend and brother to all of us, the Honorable John Lewis. Pastor Lawson, Pastor Cosby, my beloved brothers and sisters, it's good to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Just one more time. If someone had told me when I was growing up in rural Alabama that one day I would be standing here behind this pulpit as a member of Congress. I would say, you're crazy. <laughs> you're out of your mind. You don't know what you're talking about. I'm honored, happy, and pleased to be here with your congressperson, Lizzie Fletcher, candidate for Congress. And with this wonderful young brother <laughs> who need to be elected to the Senate. Yes, thank you. Keep sending Sheila back. My people in Georgia are going to send me back. <laughs> but we need some help. Yeah. So send Lizzie Fletcher to the Congress. Yeah. Thank you. 
Yeah. I, I grew up on a farm in rural Alabama, 50 miles from Montgomery. My father was a sharecropper, a tenny farmer. But back in 1944, when I was four years old, and I remember when I was four, my father had saved $300, and a man sold him 110 acres of land. We still own this land today. Yeah. Now, growing up on that farm, we raised a lot of hogs and cows, and we raised chickens. As a young boy, I wanted to be a minister. One of my uncles had Santa Claus to bring me a Bible, and I learned to read the Bible. From time to time, with the help of my brothers and sisters, we would gather all of our chickens together in the chicken yard, and I would preach to these chickens. <laughs> and on one occasion, I tried to baptize when it just didn't work. <laughs> now, I'm not suggesting that any of you are chickens, but I want to tell you, those of us who have not voted yet, yes, sir. we got to get up. Go to the polls, run, and vote like we never, ever voted before. We must do it. We must save our country, save our democracy. There are forces that want to take us back. We've come too far. We made too much progress, and we're not going back. We're going forward to create one America, one people. During the height of the Civil Rights Movement, there was a man by the name of A. Philip Randolph, who was born in Jacksonville, Florida, moved to New York City and became a champion of civil rights, human rights, and labor rights. And he would say from time to time, maybe our foremothers and our forefathers all came to this great land in different ships. But we're all in the same boat now. <laughs> so it doesn't matter whether we're black or white, Latino, Asian American, or Native American. We're one people. Yes, we are. We're one family. We live in the same house. We must never, ever give up. We must keep the faith. We must keep our eyes on the prize. I got arrested a few times during the 60s. Following the leadership of Dr. King, been inspired by Martin Luther King Jr., been inspired by Rosa Parks. I got arrested. Went to jail 40 times. And since I've been in Congress yes. another five times. <laughs> and I'm probably going to get arrested again for something. My philosophy is very simple. When you see something that is not right, not fair, not just, stand up. Say something. Speak up. Speak out. And get in what I call good trouble, necessary trouble. As Christians, we have an obligation to do what is right. Go to the polls and vote. People died for that right. Friends I knew. Three young men that I knew gave their lives. They were beaten, jailed, and taken out of jail and turned over to the clans in Mississippi. Andy Goodman, Mickey Sherney, and James Sherney. A young man named Jimmy Lee Jackson was shot in the hometown of Mrs. Coretta Scott King, died. We're living. We can go to the polls. That's the right thing to do. Those of you who have, you know, voted already, cast your vote. Just get someone else to cast a vote. <laughs> now I just want to, I'm going to finish by saying, there's a rally at Clay Road at 1 p.m. today at 16618 Clay Road. We would like to see you there. We will all be there to encourage people to vote. We can do it. We can send this young lady to the House of Representatives. We can send this young brother to the United States Senate. We can do it. We must do it. Thank you so much, and may God bless you. Thank you.